Translation, a sincere student should not neglect the discussion of such conclusions, considering them controversial, for such discussions strengthen the mind. Thus, one mind, thus one's mind becomes attached to Sri Krishna. Purport, there are many students who, in spite of reading the Bhagavad Gita, misunderstand Krishna because of imperfect knowledge and conclude him to be an ordinary historical personality. This one must not do. One should be particularly careful to understand the truth about Krishna. If because of laziness one does not come to know Krishna conclusively, one will be misguided about the cult of devotion. Like those who declare themselves advanced devotees and imitate the transcendental symptoms sometimes observed in liberated souls. Although the use of thoughts and arguments is a most suitable process for inducing an uninitiated person to become a devotee, neophytes in devotional service must always alertly understand Krishna through the vision of the revealed scriptures, the bona fide devotees and the spiritual master. Unless one hears about Sri Krishna from such authorities, one cannot make advancement in devotion to Sri Krishna. The revealed scriptures mention nine means of attaining devotional service, of which the first and foremost is hearing from authority. The seed of devotion cannot sprout unless watered by the process of hearing and chanting. One should submissively receive the transcendental messages from spiritually advanced sources and chant the very same messages for one's own benefit as well as the benefit of one's audience. <laughs> when Brahma described the situation of pure devotees freed from the culture of empiric philosophy and fruitive actions, he recommended the process of hearing from persons who are on the path of devotion following in the footsteps of such liberated souls who are able to vibrate real transcendental sound, can lead one to the highest stage of devotion, and thus one can become a Mahabhagavat. From the teachings of Lord Chaitanya to Sanatana Goswami, we learn, Shastra Jukte Shunip Shunipun Durha Shraddhaja Uttam Adhi Kari She Tariye Shangsha a person who is expert in understanding the conclusion of the revealed scriptures and who fully surrenders to the cause of the Lord is actually able to deliver others from the clutches of material existence. Srila Rupa Goswami in his Upadeshamrita advises that to make rapid advancement in the cult of devotional service one should be very active and should per persevere in executing the duties specified in the revealed scriptures and confirmed by the spiritual master. Accepting the path of liberated souls and the association of pure devotees enriches such activities. Imitation devotees who wish to advertise themselves as elevated Vaishnavas and who therefore imitate the previous Acharyas but do not follow them in principle are condemned in the words of Srimad Bhagavatam as stone-hearted. Anyone like to select, suggest that verse? Tadashmasaram hridayam bhate nansam. Ashmasaram hridayam. The heart is made of stone. Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur has commented on their stone-hearted condition as follows. Bahir Ashru Pulakayoho Satorapi Yadridhayang Navikrieta Tad Ashma Saram Iti Kanishtadhikari Nam Eva Ashru Pulokadi Matve Pi Ashma Sara Hridhyataya Nindaisha. Those who shed tears by practice, but whose hearts have not changed are to be known as stone-hearted devotees of the lowest grade. Their imitation crying induced by artificial practice is always condemned. The desired change of heart referred to above is visible in the reluctance to do anything not congenial to the devotional way. To create such a change of heart, conclusion, conclusive discussion 
about Sri Krishna and his potencies is absolutely necessary. False devotees may think that simply shedding tears will lead one to the transcendental plane even if one has not had a factual change in heart. But such a practice is useless if there is no transcendental realization. False devotees lacking the conclusion of transcendental knowledge think that artificially shedding tears will deliver them. Similarly, other false devotees think that studying books of the previous Acharyas is unadvisable like studying dry empiric philosophies. But Srila Jiva Goswami, following the previous Acharyas, has inculcated the conclusions of the scriptures in the six theses called the Shat Shandarbha. False devotees who have very little knowledge of such conclusions fail to achieve pure devotion for want of zeal in accepting the favorable directions for devotional service given by self-realized devotees. Such false devotees are like impersonalists who also consider devotional service no better than ordinary fruitive actions. Siddhanta Balaya Chittena Koro Alosh Iha Huite Krishna Lage Sudra Manosh. A sincere devotee, a sincere student should not neglect the discussion of such conclusions, considering them controversial, for such discussions strengthen the mind, thus one's mind becomes attached to Sri Krishna. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshu in Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurabena Maha Yama Shreshtam Manama Pishati Putram Atra Swarupam Rupam Tas Yagajam Urupurin Maturin Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Matava Sham Prabhto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamnatas Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagraja Tam Sahagana Raghuna Tam Vitam Tam Sajiva Sadvaitam Savathutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Tetanda Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitangscha In the translation, we find written such conclusions, because this uh, verse, within the context of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, is in relation to Krishidas Kaviraj is having established in the second chapter of the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, at the end of which this verse comes. In this chapter, Krishidas has established by Shastra Yukti, by scriptural um, what's the word for Yukti? How well, it means different things in different contexts. Scriptural discussion, scriptural argument. He has established that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. But that if you say Narayan is the original, there's also no harm in that. But actually Krishna is supreme. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that Krishna. So uh, this Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has done in brief. He has summarized that which has been established by Jiva Goswami in his uh, Shachandarbha. So this verse that we've read today is in relation to that. Uh, the chapter finishes with a few more verses. Chaitanya Mahemajani Aishab Shidhante Chitta Dhrira Haya Lage Mahima Gyana Hoite. By such conclusive studies I know the glories of Lord Chaitanya. Only by knowing these glories 
can one become strong and fixed in attachment to him? Chaitanya Prabhu Mahima Kari Bharatare Krishna Mahima Kahi Kari Abhishtare Just to enunciate the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I have tried to describe the glories of Sri Krishna in detail. Chaitanya Goshair E Tatta Nirupan Shayam Bhagavan Krishna Prajendra Nandan the conclusion is that Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, the son of the king of Raja. Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami in the opening chapters of Chaitanya Charitamrita establishes uh, what he has described here as Chaitanya Goshair E Tatta Nirupan, the, uh, establishing the ontological position must be a word for that in Sanskrit, uh, which I won't, can't think of just now. Tattvasaram, I guess. The ta yeah, Tattvasara, it would be in Sanskrit, the ontological position of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he says that without understanding that one cannot properly understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Chaitanya Charitamrita. So it's necessary to understand that. Uh, this verse that we read today, <coughs> uh, the, the, the main verse we're commenting on, Siddhanta Baliya Chittena Karoha Alash. Uh, it is uh, often quoted not exactly within the context in which it appears within Chaitanya Charitamrita, but within the broader context in which is completely valid, that Siddhanta, which is translated here as conclusion, that is uh, necessary to understand for every devotee. So this Siddhanta, what is the Siddhanta, the, the correct philosophical understanding. In other words, the correct philosophical understanding means to understand reality as it is. And everything else that goes in the name of philosophy is just a waste of time or a confusion, <laughs> source of confusion. So uh, in this, this is a very important verse for all those who want to be devotees. Uh, because, as is analyzed in this purport and later further in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, one cannot come to the topmost level of devotion unless one has a clear understanding of who Krishna is according to Siddhanta. And those who have very little understanding of Siddhanta or misunderstandings, they are known as Kanishta Adhikaris, or very weak and neophyte devotees. Now, the topics here, uh, which are discussed in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita, they are within all of Srila Prabhupada's books, some of the most difficult philosophically. So he may ask that, well, is this Vaishnava Siddhanta that's only meant for intellectuals? You can't expect every devotee, I mean, everyone can be a devotee, everyone can chant Hare Krishna and be a devotee and do service, but is it expected that is it required that everyone understand this Siddhanta in great detail? Uh, actually, the answer is yes. <laughs> but it's not wholly an intellectual process. It may not be that all the details are understood by everybody. But the essential principles of 
Vaishnava dharma is necessary for every devotee to understand this, otherwise they cannot advance. They cannot actually be proper devotees. And we find that uh, Narottam Dash Thakur, in his previously immensely popular writings, immensely popular among Vaishnavas of Bengal, he has given all the Siddhanta of Gorya Vaishnavism, but in very easy form to un very simple. Anya Deva Shrainai Tomare Kahinu Bhai E Bhakti Parama Karan, for instance, is just an example. He has written that uh, I am telling you, brother that not taking shelter of gods or conceiving of gods other than Krishna, this is in itself a major cause or the, the major cause or the major platform on which bhakti takes place. In other words, if you're trying to find shelter other, elsewhere than Krishna, you can't really be in bhakti. Bhakti means aikantiki, fully on Krishna. So we find this uh, Prem Bhakti Chandrika begins with that. Anyabhila Ashita, he quotes this first. This, and then he explains that in detail, in, in simple very simple language gives all the uh, in his Prathana and Prema Bhakti Chandrika explains it all uh, my personal experience in the 1980s I met with uh, several or uh, probably all most of the then still present in the world disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Swati Thakur and not all of them were highly intellectual. Many of them were simple in the sense of being not highly educated. But they all, actually there were some exceptions, one or two exceptions. They, they all had a very clear understanding of Vaishnava Siddhanta and they would quote just a few key points from the Rotam or from Chaitanya Charitamrita, they would quote them again and again, and that just kept them fixed. And the ones who were not very cl clear or fixed, they're the ones who, there were just one or two I found who were not very strong in bhakti at all, because they, they didn't understand, they hadn't taken it to heart. <clears throat> so, uh, it's not necessary to be a great intellectual, but it is necessary to understand the basic points that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We Jiva Surupoi Krishna Nityadas, the, the Jiva is the eternal servant of Krishna. Mayavad is absolutely kicked out as far away as possible. Uh, completely. No, not compl no, not as far away as possible, just completely. So even the more subtle point, achinta beda bed, uh, this is essential for every devotee to understand these points. The the oneness and non-oneness, or the the the, the difference and non-difference between Bhagavan and the jivas. So all these points are essential for everyone to understand, and devotees should go on hearing about this from and discussing about this and understanding this. Now, what about here at this point, this, uh, a question may be interjected. What about the verse from Bhagavatam? Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojitaha Janiyatyashu Vairagyam Jnanam Chayada Hai to come. That by performing devotional service unto Vasudeva, Krishna, uh, then 
automatically jnana, knowledge, and vairagya, detachment, arise. So you may say, well, what's the, what, what's the need then of studying Siddhanta? But bhakti, as Srila Prabhupada points out here, actually this purport is uh, a, a rendition of the uh, Anubhasha of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasar Thakur, given to us by Srila Prabhupada. So uh, here it, it is stated that the revealed scriptures mention nine means of attaining devotional service, of which first and foremost is hearing from authority. So bhakti includes hearing. It not does it include, but it be shavanadi shuddha chitte kariyadoy. Bhakti arises with the first process in that arousal of bhakti is hearing. So hearing about Krishna from authorities, naturally that hearing one is supposed to learn. So you may say then how can you say that bhakti, knowledge arises from bhakti, from the performance of bhakti yoga, if the first process of bhakti yoga is hearing. Well, here it's important to understand that the knowledge of bhakti is not exactly the same as academic knowledge. That, that knowledge is revealed to those who are actually performing bhakti yoga. Others may study the same thing, but that knowledge is not revealed. Here, gyan, there's it means not exactly the knowledge or, or the academic or, or seeing knowledge in an academic way but it means that divya jnana hride prakashito that knowledge is revealed within the heart for those yeah of yasya deve para bhakti yatha deve tatha guru tasyaite katita hyarta prakashante mahatmana one who has faith which is also uh, synonymous with bhakti shraddha shabde vishaskari sudhira nishchoy krishne bhakti koile sarva karma krita hoy faith is the very uh, underpinning or the, the basis the, the mula of, of bhakti to have faith and now someone may criticize, to have faith in Krishna and bhakti and surrender to Krishna. Then someone may object, well, you see that, well, that's not, uh, that's faith, what is that? But why should we accept, why should, why should you have faith? But uh, those who don't have faith in devotional service, they have faith that Krishna bhakti na koile sarva sarva karma kritohai. They have faith that by not performing bhakti, they can do everything as they like and they can be successful and everything. So everyone has faith. Either you have faith in bhakti or you have faith in non bhakti. And we don't need to do bhakti. People say we don't need to do bhakti. So they have faith that you don't need to do bhakti. They also have faith. But their faith takes them on a long journey down, whereas the faith of the devotees takes them on a long journey up. And that faith, also the faith of devotees, is based on uh, scriptural knowledge. Now there are some very uh, important statements here, some crucial statements here uh, in this purport. I'll just go through to discuss at length, then it would turn into a big seminar, but like I did on the uh, preface to the Nectar of Instruction. But I'm not planning to do that. I'll just touch on some of these subjects. Uh, in the in the the purport begins, Srila Prabhupada states that by saying there are many students who, in spite of reading the Bhagavad Gita, 
misunderstand Krishna because of imperfect knowledge and conclude him to be an ordinary historical personality. So in this way, in the beginning of the uh, purport, Srila Prabhupada is distinguishing between mere reading and acquisition of knowledge and understanding. There is a difference. Mere reading does not necessarily lead to understanding. I'll discuss this. I plan to discuss this more in an upcoming lecture. Not that I haven't discussed it many times previously. So many people read Bhagavad Gita and it's actually astonishing how they come to the most bizarre conclusions. I mean, Krishna is just pounding Arjuna. Surrender to me, do bhakti to me. And, and the people come out with a completely, I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He just, he just, he's, Arjuna is in a mess. He can't understand. He's in Maya. And Krishna pounds the fact into him. Yo, you have to do what I say because I am the Supreme Personality of God. And people come out with ideas which is nothing to do with Bhagavad Gita. Nowhere in Bhagavad Gita that all kinds of strange ideas that there is some unborn absolute within Krishna. <laughs> Where is that in, in Bhagavad Gita or anywhere in Shastra? It's careful to understand the truth about Krishna. If, because of laziness, one does not come to know Krishna conclusively, one will be misguided about the cult of devotion. So, if one does not apply oneself to understand in detail what is bhakti, all the different, why we accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, why we worship Krishna only and not demigods, why we do not worship Krishna for material gains, what is the proper attitude within bhakti? What is the role of the guru? There are so many points to understand. Unless we understand these conclusively, all these points in detail, then one will be misguided. If we don't understand properly, then we understand improperly. <laughs> so it is a common misconception that you somehow or other just bring people into bhakti and stick a bead bag in their hand, get them to mumble something resembling 16 rounds and get them initiated and that's it, job done. Put another number. We, we, we increase the numbers. But it is often seen, unfortunately, within our International Society for Krishna Consciousness, that many people who are f following something, uh, they don't have a clear understanding of devotional service. What does it mean to surrender to Krishna? There's this vague idea, not clearly expressed, that if, if you chant Hare Krishna, that's all you need to do. That's, uh, no need to consciously try to surrender or to try to understand Shastra or to, for instance, as I often say, because it's a commonly, it's widespread, anartha or uh, obstacle in devotional service is this idea that you can have a little sense gratification on the side, you know, eat some kami food and go to movies and at the same time you're a devotee. And but this is against the conclusion of devotional service. People who think like that, they are misguided. It's interesting the use of the term. Misguided means that they, that they accept wrong guidance. One who is clear in understanding bhakti in all details, they cannot be misguided. Someone may come to them and say that, well, you see, uh, let's go and see a movie. And some uh, say, well, you know, I'm not supposed to do it. I said, well, I know, I'm senior, I know what I'm doing. This is a very interesting movie. It'll help you to uh, understand Krishna consciousness better. I say, oh, okay, all right, it's, it's good for my bhakti. 
I'm going. I'm only going because it's good for bhakti. This is misguided. And those who, de- uh, there are persons who declare themselves advanced devotees and imitate the transcendental symptoms sometimes observed in liberated souls. And it'd be very interesting to go through this in great detail. That the Prakrita Sahajiyas, they uh, imitate ecstatic symptoms, but they, even those who are fully liberated souls, they themselves don't usually show such symptoms. Sometimes they may do, not all the time, like the Prakrita Sahajiyas do, when they're in the company of others who they're expecting praise from. Otherwise, they don't. They may, we may think, well, Prakrita Sahajiyas, you see, that's, you know, that's, that's them people over there. But, although there may not be overt symptoms within Vaishnava society of the Prakrita Sahajiyavad, uh, the very fact that, or, or if devotees are not eager to understand Siddhanta in all details and apply it in their lives, then that in itself is the seed of Prakrita Sahajiyasam. It's, it's a light, uh, uncommitted approach in which one's own happiness is considered the measure of devotional service. Recently, not so recently, few months ago, I was at a program with one, actually Iskon Sanyasi, who showed a, he showed like a seven or eight minute video of some festival that he organizes every year. And the idea was that he wanted to ask the devotees present to contribute for this festival. So he showed it, and then he addressed the crowd of devotees present with the first thing saying, so have you all enjoyed seeing that? That, that was, he so say it's very nice, all the devotees, they come to this festival every year, they all enjoy it very much, and we'd like you to donate for it. All on the basis of they enjoy, you enjoy. So that's nice that we are happy in devotional service, but that to advertise that as the, as, as the measure of bhakti or the, what we expect from bhakti is, you could say, at least the seed of the Prakrita Sahajiya Bhav is there. Instead of thinking that how we have, the devotees are coming together to glorify Krishna, how they're coming together and they get inspiration to preach Krishna consciousness more, but the, actually the only point mentioned is how everyone is enjoying it. So, just a little example of how that, well, that danger may be there, and then, then, then everyone's, oh yeah. See, yeah, this, uh, this kirtan, I didn't enjoy it so much, so it wasn't a very good kirtan. Or this lecture, I didn't enjoy it very much, it means it wasn't a very good lecture. Everything is judged on the basis of one's enjoyment, which has got, is just the opposite of bhakti, which is to contribute, to endeavor to satisfy Krishna. Atendra priti vancha tare bale kam krishnendra priti icha dhare prema nam. This is Vaishnav Siddhanta, which we are supposed to understand. That activities performed for our own pleasure are mundane. Activities performed for Krishna's pleasure are spiritual. Very, this is the crux, the basic siddhanta, philosophical conclusion or philosophical principle. And those who don't understand, then they are prakrita sahajyas.
So neophytes in devotional service must always alertly understand Krishna through the vision of the revealed scriptures, the bona fide devotees and the spiritual master. Shastra, that is Shastra, Vaishnav Guru. Unless one hears about Sri Krishna from such authorities, one cannot make advancement in devotion to Sri Krishna. And here it's talking, here it's specifically mentioned about hearing the Siddhanta. Unless one hears in this way, one cannot advance. Yeah. To make rapid advancement in the cult of devotional service, one should be very active and should persevere. One should be very active and should persevere in executing the duties specified in the revealed scriptures and confirmed by the spiritual master. Those who may appear to be very elevated Vaishnavas and imitate the previous Acharyas, but do not follow them in principle, are condemned in the words of Srimad Bhagavatam as stone-hearted. Now, here's a very important point. The change of heart, the change of heart is visible in the reluctance to do anything not congenial to the devotional way. So if we find devotees who are, uh, who even preach to others that you should, you know, you have to go to movies, you have to go to kami restaurants, you have to have lots of sex with your wife, and so on. We can understand that the change of, despite the fact that they may be advertising, I'm a very sincere devotee, or very, sorry, very senior devotee, but the change of heart never happened. They didn't make the switch from materialistic consciousness to devotional consciousness. Why? To create such a change of heart, conclusive discussion about Sri Krishna and his potencies is absolutely necessary. False devotees may think that simply shedding tears will lead one to the transcendental plane. Or they may think that, you know, I had a vision of Krishna, or I feel something in my heart, or I heard Krishna's ankle bells tinkle. They may, such, they may think such things, but, Prabhupada writes here, if one has not had a factual change in heart, such a practice is useless if there is no transcendental realization. So someone may say, yeah, we heard Krishna's ankle bells tinkle, or I feel in my heart, so many things. But we have to see in practice, just like uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he would, someone, if someone would say, I, in my dream, I saw, or I, I went to Vrindavan and I saw Krishna having Ras Lila, then why did you come back to your materialistic life? If you actually saw Krishna in Ras Leela, then why did you come back to continue being a, a worm in stool, dressed as a human, dressed as a human being, carrying on with your materialistic way of life? And why would Krishna show his Ras Leela to you? And even if you do, did imagine hearing Krishna's ankle bells tinkle, is your heart clean from material desires? So persons who are on the sentimental platform, they're, they're like, they get carried away by this kind of thing. We heard the ankle bells tinkle. Or, I mean, Krishna does show such things. There, there may be such things. But that is, 
the, from our perspective, the crux of our devotional service is not this miracle, so-called, but how we are surrendered to Krishna in devotional service. Not that we are waiting for Krishna to enter. Come on, Krishna, just, you know, dance a little and then we can hear your ankle bells tinkle. It's a completely wrong attitude. But people are sentimental, they have such attitudes. But by sentiment, one is always misguided. People think, in my heart, I feel. But uh, people tend to think, if I feel something very strongly in my heart, it must be correct. That's because we, we overestimate ourselves. We think that, well, you see, I'm very sincere, so whatever's in my heart must be right. But our hearts are full of calm, crowd, low, moha, madha, madha, all the bad things, and then we trust what appears in our heart. Foolishness on top of foolishness. Anyway, we're foolish, and then to trust our own foolishness is more foolishness. One should never, we could read the book. One should never make friends with one's mind. You'll find in the instructions of Jarabharat. But we think, well, I'm a devotee, you see, so I must, so I must be right. <laughs> underestimating. Underestimating Maya. So, false devotees, lacking the conclusion of transcendental knowledge, think that artificially shedding tears will deliver them. Yeah, this is a very dangerous, you see, that you think. That, you know, without very deeply trying to understand what is bhakti, who is Krishna, how to surrender to Krishna, we just have some, some feelings and we think, that's it, I'm already the Maya's trick. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada, he uh, stressed so much studying his books in which he's given all the conclusions of devotional service. Yeah. So studying these books is essential. Otherwise, how can we understand devotional service? Studying, hearing. Such, uh, here, talking about false devotees. A lot of talk in this purport about false devotees. And false devotees within the context of this purport refers to those who are lazy to understand the conclusions of bhakti. They're not sincere. They're not trying to understand what bhakti is. It means they have some preconception of what bhakti is and they follow that. They don't try to understand from Shastra and the Acharyas what Bhakti actually is. But they think, yeah, Bhakti, I know Bhakti, and then they do, whatever, according to their own imagination, which may be, you know, 20%, 30%, 50%, 70%, right, but then the other parts may be uh, you know, just some Sahajya, Mayavad, mundane, you're doing everything right, you know, we're getting up from Mongolati, we're doing this, we're doing that, and, but then some mixture, some mundane welfare work or some impersonalism, some sahajirism, and you're off track. You're on a tangent. It means looks like you're going on the same path, but gradually you're going off. So Srila Prabhupada refers to false devotees are like impersonalists who consider devotional service no better than ordinary fruitive action. Yeah, in personalists, they think that karma and bhakti, they're both, they're okay. They're very, they're all right for, stu for pious people who are not very advanced. By doing so, they'll gradually come to the platform of realizing that all is one. So say the impersonalists. Go and find someone. Go find an impersonalist. Beat them on the head every day. It's good for your devotional service <laughs> to find some. You don't have to, not literally with a club. Uh, it's also not bad, but it's you know, not allowed by law. So, uh, But verbally, at least, we should, with Siddhanta, with Shastric arg arguments, 
we should show how the impersonalists are wrong. It's not all one. Krishna is, we are not the same as Krishna. Krishna is supreme. We have to surrender to Krishna. But the Mayavadis, they think that, well, people who do karma and they do bhakti, it's all the same. Because actually in, in karma, there is a semblance of bhakti. Kangshanta karmanang sitim yajanta eha devataha. In karma, there is worship of demigods to get some result. And in bhakti, there is worship of Krishna. But not to get a mundane result, to get the result of the opportunity to serve Krishna more and more. That is bhakti. But to an outsider, it may seem the same. So if we don't, again, if we don't have Siddhanta, if we don't clearly distinguish that between karma and between pure bhakti, or between, or even if we introduce elements of karma into, come to the temple and you will get freed from all your, all the bad things and Krishna will bless you. We can induce people like that. But we'll again, we'll create an atmosphere in which just confuses everything. And the Siddhanta, the clear understanding of bhakti, is not clearly expressed. And then people don't get it. That's another idea which is away from the Siddhanta. Or not a, that you just somehow or other bring people to bhakti and that's it. But that's not exactly it. It is yena yena tena prakarena mana krishna niveshayat. Somehow or other bring people to bhakti. But then the next part, sarva vidhi nisheda sya eti arivakin. That then you then you have to introduce all the rules and regulations and understanding. But somehow or other you bring people. You know, offer them a prize for winning the Bhagavad Gita, you know, fifty thousand rupees something like that. Some or other you bring them and then uh, that's it. Job done. But no, then you have to teach them. If you just leave it at that, that means that one is a, at least according to this purport, false devotee. So that's all I'm going to say about that for now unless anyone has any question. Yeah. planning for the future, but this very fact that we are, we are concentrated on them bringing the devotees and then not educating them or not finding the means or ways how to engage them in the process of bhakti in the long term. Uh, some or other this is not emphasized or is missing at all. I plan to discuss this some more in an upcoming lecture, maybe tomorrow. Otherwise, our movement becomes just like another church. Which right, we're just trying to bring people in. And, and a large congregation. And what is that yeah, 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 yeah. I plan to discuss these points more, probably tomorrow. Mm. Where is the line? It seems like Srila Prabhupada introduced life membership program. Prabhupada introduced the life membership program. Where is the line? Well, actually, the way Prabhupada introduced the Life Membership Program is not the, the way that it developed. Prabhupada didn't introduce the Life Membership Program that you go to people and tell them, look, you'll save so much money if you go overseas on a hotel. He didn't introduce it like that. He said you can stay three days in our centers. The idea is that they can the Life Members can associate with the devotees. But the devotees found, a, and the money was supposed to go 50% to BBT. 50% to construction. So if it had remained like that, and they were supposed to get all the books. So Prabhupada actually set it up on a very spiritual basis. The fact that it almost immediately got converted into an easy money-making ploy by, telling, by offering people material inducements, I mean, that's something different. That you induce people, you get this material benefit, and uh, 
the money was in almost all cases not used as Prabhupada said it should be used. Yeah, okay, so yes. We listen to our heart and become more sentimental than we already are. Paramatma is situated in the heart, yeah. In the intellect, yeah. But that doesn't mean that your intellect is necessarily pure. Because Krishna says, Matasmriti jnanam apohanam cha. From me comes memory knowledge and forgetfulness. So it's not necessarily that what we're hearing is, is pure or what Paramatma induces us or allows us to think. One should listen to the message of Shastra as received through authorities and try to understand that through purified intellect. understanding the basic principle that we are meant for the service of Krishna. That if we just on the basis of our, our feelings, our sentiment, without reference to scripture, uh, call that spiritual, then it's, it's just like all this new age stuff. You, you have to open your heart and get in contact with your inner feelings. That's the problem. That's why we're in the material world. <laughs> because we're in contact with our inner, with our feelings and they're not... Our inner feelings are perverse. We should open our heart and throw out all the garbage and then invite Krishna in. But if we open our heart and we just swim around in the garbage, and it, it's just like, you know, s someone passes stool and they like the smell of their own stool. And we think, oh, so nice. <laughs> so it's like that. It, oh, my heart, it must be good. Because it's, it's me and I'm good. Therefore, one is supposed to come before the Guru like a blank slate. thinking, I know nothing, I, I require to learn. Okay, so we'll stop.